Hello everyone and welcome to The Amateur. Today I want to talk a little bit about performance anxiety and playing the inner game. So stay tuned. Happy New Year, everyone! Yay! You know, I definitely fall into the category of people who are grumpy during the holidays. The days are short, it's dark, it's cold, um, lots of annoying things happen at work in the month of December. And so um, I'm usually in a foul, foul mood until about mid-January, and then, generally speaking, I get a hold of myself. For what it's worth, the grumpiness that I experience at the end of the year generally leads to uh, a process of reevaluation, deciding what things I want to keep in my life and what things I want to get rid of. And I, I've historically been pretty good at throwing things away. This YouTube channel is the most discretionary and yet one of the more time consuming things that I do. It's always on the list of things that I might potentially not do anymore. Fortunately, I'm going to keep doing it because uh, it's something that I enjoy. Actually, I have a list of reasons in no particular order. It is for the purposes of learning, improving, um, enriching, and finally sharing. I like to share what I do. Oh, and fun. Fun. I have fun doing this as well. I had to make it memorable somehow. Anyway, but, however, so when I was doing last week's recording of Prokofiev's Harp Prelude, I was grumpy and reminded that, you know, one of the things that, that I still struggle with is performance anxiety. Going back to practicing, I'm good at practicing. I have my routine, I have my method, I've been doing it for years, but for some reason, when the, the cameras come on and I see that red light staring me in the face, I have a real problem. And things that go off very, very well and are very polished and natural and fluid in the practice session, once that red light comes on, oh boy, uh, anything could happen, right? Even things that you don't predict, simple things will tend to go wrong. But anyway, so last weekend when I'm recording the harp prelude, after some pretty good practice sessions, I felt pretty well prepared, the piece was memorized. I had to do a lot of takes in order to get that cut. Some really frustrating moments where things that I did not expect to go wrong just went wrong. At a certain point, I had to stop and take a walk around the block in minus 15 C weather and snow. So that's when it occurred to me that this is the kind of thing that I should be talking about on this channel more often, because I know I'm not alone. It's not just a piano problem, it's, it's performance of any kind. And the truth is that most of my recordings are difficult births. When I was in school, I had a roommate. He was always talking about this book called The Inner Game of Tennis. I didn't have my own copy. I think back in the day, I probably just read his, but I still remembered the, the thesis of the book. So I decided to get myself a copy and read it again. So The Inner Game of Tennis, it's a, it's a short book anyone can read in an afternoon. And what it talks about is the two selves, which is an extremely important concept and something that resonates with me very, very strongly. In, in the book, he just keeps it simple and calls the selves self one and self two. Self one is your conscious brain, your thinking brain, your analytical brain. And self two is kind of your id, 
uh, your inner child. So I guess the, the Freudian equivalent would be self one is the same as the super ego, I think, and self two is the id. So even though the book is called The Inner Game of Tennis, um, and you know, tennis examples are the things that he cites in the book, the concepts that he's talking about in the book are applicable to a large number of things. I mean, while I was reading it, I wasn't just thinking about the, the way that it applies to my piano practice and piano performance. I was thinking also, oh my God, it was the same with my process of learning French. So with this concept of self one and self two, he starts the book with the example of children and how quickly they learn to do certain things um, instinctually, right? Like learning to walk, learning to speak. Uh, and that is all self two, the id doing the work. And then over time, of course, the thinking brain develops and the self one starts to assert itself. I think for, uh, for a lot of people, myself included, it is that self one that is providing the interference, the self consciousness that gets in the way of what should, if you practice correctly, and if you can actually play something, you should just be able to record it right. But something changes. So let's take a couple of examples from the heart prelude. This is one passage. In practice, no problem. It's not a complicated passage. And yet, when the camera lights came on, this passage literally would not come out properly. Like, very weird kind of epileptic things, and there was no reasonable explanation why those notes would not come out in the proper order. But it was at that point that I had to get up, turn the cameras off, and take a walk. Discerning listeners will have probably noticed that in that particular piece, the final passage is a bit rushed. And this is a consequence of the increasing level of fear that I experience as I'm playing through a piece. Because as you know, you, you progress through a piece, the longer you go without making mistake, the stakes get ever higher that if you do make a mistake, what came before is just some cost that you're gonna to have to throw away by doing another take. The piece that I'm going to play today, which is the eighth and final nocturne of Francois Poulenc's series, I picked it because it has kind of a postlude, uh, a benediction quality to it. And given that it's kind of the end of 2021 and the beginning of 2022, I wanted to send the year off with a piece of beautiful music. It's not difficult. It's something that, you know, I cracked open and learned in a couple of hours and it was kind of ready to record. Or so I thought, right? The other behavioral quirk that I've observed many, many times over the years is if, for example, you have um, you have a section of the piece that you're playing that you find particularly beautiful. That is exactly the passage that you're going to screw up when the cameras are on. Self-sabotage is the thing that comes to mind. It's almost as if self one is seeing that passage approach and is basically saying, you are not worthy, David, to play that passage beautifully. I'll be talking about this stuff over the course of subsequent recordings. And then obviously, if you have something that you want me to talk about, leave it in the comments and we'll discuss. Click that like button, subscribe to the channel. And until next time, enjoy this absolutely gorgeous piece by Francois Poulenc.
You know, it did occur to me, Hercule, that while I was reading the inner game of tennis, maybe you're my self one. You're an external manifestation of my self one. And what if, what if I end up solving for you? What on earth would I do with you? Roll you up and put you in a bottle and throw you in the St. Lawrence? I might do that. Cut you up into tiny pieces and throw you away in the garbage where you belong.